I kind of had a little bit of um, break from live arena videos since I got to Gold Dream, but I have been doing a few battles every now and then and kind of testing and I did some fights yesterday and I think I have pretty good idea what I should do at this point. It definitely feels a bit different than in um, Gold 2. And then there's a lot of other things that I need to talk about as well, so it was about time to do one of these videos so I can rant about different things. But I guess one thing that uh, many people are curious about was what happened Monday in Classic Arena Reset, where I was doing the Initve thing and only basically doing fights with Initve. I will make a separate video about that, but it's basically like, I wouldn't say simple thing, but basically what happens there is that there is some kind of weird interaction with um, Shamal passive and Taras passive. It may be a bug, it may be some weird mechanic that isn't really well explained in the game, but basically, oh, he picked Rotos, goddammit. Basically, when um, at the start of the fight, Taras passive hears your team, and then Shamal passive procs it, and he attacks Taras and removes the fears. And because of that, the first hit in the fight, if you go first, it is not redirected by UDK passive. So that's why you, if your Wukong is the fastest champion in both teams, if he goes first and does the A2 and tries to sheep Taras, it's not getting red redirected by UDK and goes to Taras instead and that's basically what enables that strategy. Wait a second, I need to think a bit here. I think I'm gonna go with Kaimar and then... Should I go with Mountain King? He only has one Reviver. I think I'm gonna go with Mountain King and then ban Harima and hope that he doesn't go with two Revivers, but maybe, maybe this will work. I have been using Mountain King lately, I feel like I'm kind of forced to use him again because often people are wiki picking Wukong instead of Rotos, but this time it was the other way. But basically, in that setup, we get the Tara sheep at the start of the fight. And the speed of the sheep is set very slow. It only has a speed of 150. That's why the like Init and the rest of the team is very slow. And then we have them at specific speeds, which I did show at the end of the last classic arena reset video but i'll make another oh that might be a problem but i'll make another one about it but when we have them at the specific speeds you will generally have the init the move right after the polymorph ends on taras and kill the taras and then basically you just out of the rest of fight from there it's definitely nowhere close to the fastest team that you can make in this meta to counter taras teams which is every single defense team that you see in High Platinum. It's not the fastest, it's not the most reliable one, so if you have a very good account, it's not really the way to go, but for me, it's actually kind of uh, one of the better ways for me to fight those teams, or maybe against some Taras teams, my old UDK Rotos team works fine, but if they have UDK in their defense, that is definitely the only way that I can fight those types of Taras teams. So yeah, the... Um, what's his name? Emic Trunkhart. He's kind of issue here because... Um, hmm, maybe I should open with A2 actually. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, I did A2 anyway because... Um, we did resist the Warlord, I guess, but then we have to wait for the Stone Skin to end and we're not able to do anything for a bit, but... Maybe it's okay. But yeah, that's about that issue, and I'll make a separate video about the init then. After this fight, I have a bunch of other things that I need to talk about, but let's focus on this fight, and then I can kind of uh, go through them one at a time. I have so many different things that I need to talk about, because I haven't made live arena videos in a while, so... I'll probably forget a bunch of stuff as well, but... I kind of need to get a bunch of different things like um, off my heart and talk about them so that I don't forget about them. There were so many other things in the past that I was supposed to make videos about or I was supposed to talk on a video and 
and I just forgot to do it. So anyway, a little bit of um, allergy issues. Also, I had a funny thing, but I'll show it after this uh, this fight. But basically, by the way, doesn't this guy make content? I'm. Let me double check. I didn't realize it at the start of the fight, but I think he's one of those Russian content creators. There is kind of this thing that there's actually, yeah, he. I think he's that guy. There is quite a quite a, quite a few fairly large Russian content creators, but they make content only in Russian, and basically, as non-Russian people often have never heard about them, and I never get their videos recommended to me and. Nobody talks about their content because they are kind of isolated to only Russian speakers. But we we have one of those in our clan. No, actually, we have two of them in clan. I I even forget how many Russian content creators there is in Matt. But we have two, and I think this guy is one of the other Russian content creators. I I do like him using. Um, Emic Drunkhart, but he was definitely like, he didn't have Taras, and I guess we banned the Harima, so it wasn't really the worst team that we could meet, even though he's very high points in live arena. By the way, so here is his channel, I guess it's the exact same name as his um, in-game name, but if you're interested about that, I'm pretty sure he only speaks in Russian, like like this, Ru this Russian-speaking content creators tend to do, but if you're about that, then you should go watch his content. I think I have fought him in the past, but to be honest, I think I, I didn't remember that time that he was a content creator. Anyway, so some of the other things that I wanted to talk about, actually I ended up getting three Void Champions on the last... Uh, last weekend's void event. Now, to be fair, that, that was in 32 shards, by the way. To be fair, the first shard that I pulled, that was a pity pull. I already said the last time that I pulled that I'm gonna get pity pull, but I didn't. But this time it was the first shard that I got pity. And basically, I actually got the champion that he was using. I got Emic and... Um, Emik and Tuhanarak as my uh, first two champions. One of them was the pity pool. And then on Sunday from the Void Shard, I actually, from Clan was Void Shard, I got a Necret again, which is very good pool, and I wish I could trade it with somebody that wants a Necret. But that's kind of... Um, kind of uh, ironic, because basically the only relevant PvP Void Champion that I have pulled is Necret. And that was my third Necrot, so I wish it would have been something else, but I did end up empowering my main Necrot. And I'm almost considering making it a plus two, because I haven't been using my second Necrot basically all year. He used to be in Stone Skin, but nowadays I'm using UDK in my Slow Stone Skin and Byteon in my Fast Stone Skin, and have been doing it all year. So I haven't been using him, but... Often people do use two different builds on Necrot, like one in offense and one in defense, but I haven't been doing it. But for now I'm gonna keep it, but I could down the line actually empower it. So basically I got three void legendaries in on the weekend, which is insane luck. Or like, let's say two, because one was pity pool, but I got two in 32 uh, voids, which is of course the best luck I have ever had. And I did get three legendaries during the Sifi Tenax, so there was a good chance that I could have gotten Sifi, but it didn't happen this time, but I can definitely um, not complain about that RNG. But that's basically what happened, and I didn't really <laughs> make a video or talk about it, so everybody doesn't even know that I actually also got a Necret on Sunday. And then there is um, another interesting thing to talk about, kind of similar account update and I got this piece of uh, chest yesterday 
it might not seem that um wait let me minimize it so that we can do the pick and ban phase at the same time ah uh, he picked okay <laughs> this is very bad picks for me because uh harry my lockout is the ultimate like issue for me because i want to ban both of them and now I have to pick Kaimar and so on. But now he also picked Wukong, which is my one of my two main ogres. So this is very hard. Um, pick and ban phase for me. We're gonna have to go with Mountain King again, I think. But at least we got the Duchess, so he's not gonna be able to pick Duchess, which Mountain King would uh, weak hit against. But so, this chest piece, I actually got it yesterday. And you might be wondering, that why am I rolling um, lethal pieces when it's like a couple months since the last Dark Fate rotation? Well, actually, I wasn't rolling items. This was, this was already at well. What I did on this item is that I chaos ordered it. As you can see, I have made a couple videos about this in the past, talking that it's the best way to get super endgame pieces, if you really like try hard it to get um, bottom pieces with the current ascension. And basically what it um, involves is that you roll any item to 12 and you ascend it. And if you chaos or it, everything else is randomized, but it will always keep the ascension. So if you keep chest pieces with attack ascension, then it is the, I mean, it's still a low chance to get what you want, but it is the most, um, it is the way where you have most agency trying to get the specific thing that you want, which is a good um, attack scaling nuke or chest piece. And this is only um, blue item, even though it's six star, and it even has one waste to draw, so it might not seem that good in the first place, but it does have all of the important substats, and we can group the speed and we get the ascension. So it's actually basically my best chest piece. I have one comparable chest piece for Rotos, but basically it's my best attack scaling chest piece. Now, you could have like, um, if you have legendary one with the right substats and all of the stats are rolled perfectly with bad ascension, it could basically be as good piece as this, so it's definitely not the best chest or anything, but I specifically needed a chest because I have good pieces on other slots except chest, so that's why I was doing this. Okay, come on, give us an extra turn, we really need to get the extra turn here. Ah. Well, Mountain King can Oh, okay, he's locked out. Wait, so he did... <laughs> He removed the stone skin with, with Wukong. We kind of got unlucky here, I guess. I guess this is a game over. Just no comeback from here. If the Kaimar didn't get buff stripped, then we could still be okay. But now it's too late. I think. Maybe we can... No, he... Wait. Can we actually make a comeback? His, his uh, Leoris is actually pretty slow, so... That is kind of giving us some opportunity. Now he is taunted, so we could do something else, but... Uh, I don't want to make a mistake here. Okay, let's go for the Reviver. Nice. Oh! Oh my god! No! Wait, oh, he doesn't have AoE. Look. Okay, am I still good? Dude, I thought I lost. I didn't even think about that, that he could polymorph my UDK and remove the town that way. Damn, th this was a very close fight, but I guess somehow we were able to pull it off. Okay, we, ha we have a few pretty uh, weird wins at the start of the session, but I guess it's uh, starting out very well because we are at gold tree right now and all of the enemies that we get are insanely powerful and there is no easy fights anymore. It's kind of like people were talking when you go from 
gold 1 to gold 2. There's an insane difference and gold 2 is infinitely more harder. And probably it's kind of like, you know, shifting over time that it used to be gold 2, but nowadays gold 3 is where you, where you get the really hard enemies. But yeah, th 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 those were the things that I wanted to talk about regarding my Akon prog progression. So I actually had a um, pretty interesting weekend that I got the Void, or like, let's say last week, that I got three Void Legendaries, and then I got a very good chest piece. And Raid is a game that, like, uh, progresses very slowly, and you might have even months where you don't get anything, like, good or relevant that progresses your account but now i had like bunch of different things on one week so it's pretty exciting and of course i had um, windows as well which i have used and tried and maybe we will get some use out of him today as well and i i will still make a separate video talking about him but i haven't been using him <laughs> that much to be honest I don't think the issue with Quintos is actually his damage. His damage is better than it might sound on paper because his A2 ignores, like, well, it buff strips and then it ignores passes and also puts decreased defense before you attacking. So it can even one shot champions like Taras easily. And his A3 is better than it sounds as well. The damage is fine because you get the um, crit damage from it. And you have the passive that also gives you 10% of max enemy max HP damage for each buff. They hit both good, and when you get killed with one of them, it resets the cooldown of the other one. So his damage is actually very good, I think. But the main issue with him is the survivability, because other meta champions like Rotos, Harima, Taras, all of them are very tanky and are able to get turns because of their passives. That stays so that Quintus ha has some champions like Taras or like Baron or um, Georgit. They can always easily one-shot him through Necret protection and all shields and so on. So it's pretty to actually keep him alive. That that's the main issue with him. Ronda is definitely a big issue for me as well because I rely a lot on passives and shields. Damn, maybe I should have gone with not Wukong, but maybe Mitral and Dormin in this fight. But yeah, I, I'm definitely using Windows, but you need to use him in very specific, specific matchups and usually as the like the last pick against the enemy that's the only way you can pick him because i'm always going second i'm not using any speed teams and there's a good chance that he's never gonna get any turn in most of the fights that i meet against good enemies and it's kind of unfortunate because i think if you can get windows early on which is not possible he will be very good nuker and he's definitely much better than champions like Tranda nowadays as a nuker, but for the super end game, it's kind of um, hard to use him. Okay, what are we gonna do here? Should we go with? I think we're just gonna go with Necret and Ban Warlord. I often don't get to do this because usually they pick both Harima and Warlord, and then I have to pick Kaimar and Ban Harima. But I can just ban actually Warlord in this fight. It's not gonna be easy one because the Ronda can one-shot anything who Necret. And it's um, blocking the passives of everybody or, or the skills as well. So, But if, if I can survive long enough that I can get the turn on Wukong, then this team is not gonna be like tanky. I can... I can easily destroy it even without attack buff as long as I actually get to take a turn. Okay, that was way easier than I thought it was gonna be. I'm pretty sure everybody except Duchess is just gonna die here from this A2. 
Oh, okay. Um, Ragas didn't actually die to it, but it's good enough. Also, with Python, we have claims plus immunity, which um, is a big problem for Ragas because he's not able to put the dec decreased defense on us, and his kit basically relies on that, so he's not going to do that much damage without it. But yeah, th that chest piece that I showcased earlier, I put that on Wukong, so... Um, he had a chest piece already with attack ascension, and he had maybe a little bit more crit damage than he has now, but that chest piece didn't have a, a speed substat, so he gained a decent amount of speed now. O only issue is that I didn't have any 6-star speed clips, so there's definitely some room to clip that chest more, and I'm definitely gonna use them on it when I get them. Damn, are, are we actually gonna get three wins in a row in Gold Tree? Because this is definitely... I've been getting very hard matches here. I'm not getting a lot of win streaks in Gold Tree, but to be fair though, when I got here, I've been doing maybe a couple fights a day and not really like... Um, I haven't done any full sessions since my Dormin video like a week ago, so... Okay, that, that should be it for this fight. And d don't forget, in this fight we don't even have attack buffs, so not many nukers would have a, <laughs> would have damage like this without attack buff. Ba basically only a couple, couple champions could do something like this. And he was a fusion. I said it many times and every time I say it, somebody gets offended, but people always talk about them not doing good fusions but actually some of the best champions in the game have been fusions the, the issue is just that um, there's like few champions that are much better than the rest and you're seeing the same couple of champions in every fight and most of them happen to be void champions by design of course so that's why it might feel like the fusions are crap, but there's only a couple top tier champions in the game in the first place, and there happens to be few fusions that actually are among them, like maybe Rotos, UDK, and Wukong, and a bunch of like um, mid tier PvP champions like Uk or Helicat or Mitral. So I think the fusions are actually overall better than average champions in this game, but. Of course, none of the fusions are comparable to like Sifi, Taras and Maritska, but still, so... Oh, okay. Uh, it's always confusing. Um, I'm not sure which account is this, because you know why, but I think this might be Golden Sato account. I'm not quite sure, because I don't follow that stuff so closely, but... The people who know, know what I'm talking about, but I don't really want to create drama, so let's not get, get into it that much. But yeah, it's an either case. I'm not sure which account it is, but it's definitely not an account that I can beat. He has three champions at plus four, which means that you need to have five copies of them. and. Harima is new champion and the other ones are void. On my account, I literally... There's no champion that I can make plus four. Not even like really old bad ones that are um, non-void champions. I literally couldn't make anything plus four on my account. Um, wait. Yeah, I guess I have to go with Kaimar. There's no other choice. The champion that... I'm closest to making a plus 4, but I haven't even empowered him, is Brockney. I could make a plus 3 Brockney, but I'm not sure if I can make anything else than plus 3. I almost uh, empowered Brockney at one point, because maybe like a year ago, or a little bit more than a year ago, like 
at the end of the last summer and maybe one or two months after it, that, that was before I had a Duchess. I was using Brockney in my deep. That, that was just when we got Bolster set. I was using Brockney in my defense and I could make him last three at the time. And I was seriously considering doing it. Wait, should we go with Wukong? Wukong or Mountain King? I think we're actually gonna go with Mountain King, but there's no way we can beat him because. Um, I mean, with Marit's can see if he has infinite revise and then he has the lockout. And if I went with Wukong, his attack would be reduced by Taras, so he wouldn't be able to finish off this fight. But I can't really finish this fight with anything else except Rotos. And maybe we actually have a small chance in winning since he didn't ban Rotos, but probably not. I don't know why he didn't ban Rotos though. Basically, I couldn't win him if, like, only way I can win him is with Rotos. Maybe if I get very good RNG here, it's like, oh wait, ah, oh, I got locked out. Ah, oh, goddamn. Okay, never mind. Oh yeah, I guess he has. Yeah, he has plus four Yumeko and he's using the Aura, so I don't have enough resistance for that. Yeah. <laughs> we, we can just surrender that off the bat. If you get like accuracy champion like you, you make at plus four, and I guess he probably has six star blessing as well, you gain an insane amount of accuracy from them. So it's impossible to, yeah, it's impossible. Oh, we can see it from here. Yeah, it's impossible to resist a plus four you make with six star blessing, e even if you're on Kaimar is um, 6 star and plus 4, it still wouldn't happen because accuracy has the advantage and you need 42 more resistance to be at 50-50 chance to resist. But he probably has like several hundred more accuracy than is needed to debuff my Kaimar. I, I even forgot about that, that Kaimar was completely unviable against the plus four Yumeko, so it didn't even really cross my mind. I mean, I saw that it was plus four, but I didn't even think about it because how many people in this game have a plus four Yumeko? I, w I wish I had just one Yumeko, I mean, <laughs> if I had a, a Yumeko like a year ago, I guarantee you I would have multiple trophies on my account there's like there's zero doubt in my mind that i will have like not one but multiple multiple trophies if i had a lockout before taras and maritzka were released into the game but it's no um no reason to like cry over spoiled milk it's not like if i got a lockout now it's not like i could get trophy anymore so that opportunity is kind of lost and not possible nowadays because of Taras and Marichka. But hopefully we will we will not meet accounts like that and we will get something slightly more reasonable than, than that. Mm. I could go with Wukong in this one. I'm kind of um, kind of scared to use Wukong against Taras teams because the um, the attack gets reduced so much by Taras passive. But le let's see what he does and then decide what we do. I'll either go with Wukong or then I'll go with Tormin. Well, Mountain King is my third option, but it's probably gonna be. Tormin or Wukong, depending what he picks. Okay, so he has triple immunity in his team, so Tormin is definitely not an option. It's basically only option if he doesn't pick any champions with immunity buff, or he picks one and I ban it, but at this point Tormin is definitely not possible. And also Mountain King isn't possible, because he's a single target nuker with no extra turns, and he basically only has one hard hitting skill so he's not able to finish off a team with 
two or three re revivers like this one has. But instead, we can use Helicat in this team, which will make it very annoying fight for him because he has to pick a Nuker and he's not able to pick a buff stripper anymore. I mean, we, we can already pretty much guarantee that he's gonna ban the Helicat. He doesn't really have other options at this point. I mean, which is very good for me because that means that I'm getting Rotos in this fight. I don't think he will he will ban Rotos in this fight when I, I already have Wukong and Helicat in my team. And we, we can basically ban anything we want in this team, which is very interesting. I think we're actually going to go for Taras ban, which might be sound kind of weird because he has multiple revivers, but um, the Taras passive that reduces my attack is a big issue because um, regardless, it's going to be a long fight since he has so many revivers in his team. But if our damage doesn't get reduced over time, then I think we should eventually beat this team. Also, I think he made the wrong ban here. He, he definitely should have banned Helicat instead of Rotos. Wuk Wukong certainly has the damage to uh, finish off this team because there's no lockout or Harima or anything like that, or Taras passive. Also, I, I can't wait for the... I mean, yeah, we don't have attack buff in this fight, but that's not even a problem. But um, we got the event right now where you can get 4-star blessing on Wukong. And I will definitely do it if you can. But probably, I mean, you already know if you're going for the event. I don't think at this point you can change your mind and suddenly start doing it unless you were already doing those events and those events were very hard like you had to do faction specific um, dungeons which certainly most people can't do it in this game but if you're a super long time player like me you can probably do them but they're gonna be long runs like I was doing three minute runs on like Ice Golem and basically all of the dungeons uh, normal 25 and they were maybe like 2-4 to four minutes runs in, instead of speed runs but I was definitely able to do them but basically I think um, I'm one event off from getting 4 star, four star blessing on Wukong and that means uh, 25 extra crit damage which is no small deal at this point. I also lost a little bit of crit damage because um, because of the um, I changed for the chest with yeah see we we one shot them without attack buff. I changed the chest for one that um, like the old one didn't have speed substat on it. This one has speed but a little bit less crit damage, so I lost maybe like. 10 crit damage or something, but I'm gonna make up for it when I get the 4 star blessing maybe tomorrow or the next day. But other than that, my Wukong is uh, looking pretty strong as you can see. Maybe the worst piece of gear at this point is those boots that don't have uh, crit damage subset, but it's very hard to get upgrade for them. And I do have a one better piece of boots but they are on my rotos so they are gonna stay on him but this is pretty much end game gear and it's not very easy to upgrade my wukong gear at this point oh yeah and that kind of relates to what i was talking about before like you might be wondering that why was i using chaos or on blue lead out pieces basically th the deal was that i already had pretty good pieces on those other bottom slots and i was specifically looking for chests i, I could use 
um, HP scaling chest as well. But that is the good thing about the Chaos Sword that you can target the specific item slot that you want, especially when you do the Ascension trick. So I'm not sure what I will do on the next lethal rotation because I think maybe for the past year, probably like um, maybe three or four lethal rotations in a row, I was only crafting chest pieces. But now I, now that I happen to get that one with the Chaos Sword, even though it's not like super per perfect, but it's um, adequate at this point that it has all of the good substats and ascension and I can use the speed clip on it. So now I could probably craft anything. I might still keep doing chests, but I have to look up my items and kind of re-evaluate. Maybe I will do chests or maybe I will do clothes again. I definitely do have several good gloves as well, but um, uh, like because gloves have multiple good substats on them and you only basically need to get, um, I mean, good ascensions on them and you only need to get two good substats, like, well, two or three, but like uh, the short version is that it's uh, because of having multiple good um, Ascensions, it's easier to get good gloves than other pieces, so it might be easier to upgrade them. Like talking about bottom pieces, no, not top pieces. Uh, what do I want to do here? I guess we're gonna go with Wukong since he's letting us have it. The good thing about if I get Kaimar, I mean Wukong and Rotas as my nuker, is that I don't really need something extra to defend my champions like Helicat or Necrot that I usually use when I use other nukers. And now I can always go go with Kaimar as my last pick, even if they are not going with Lockout. Um, it is a plus to Lockout, so I think I'm gonna ban it anyway since what happened with Timos plus for Yumeko. Now he doesn't have accuracy aura and it's not plus four, so there might be a decent chance that I can actually resist it. But mm, I think I'm gonna go with him. I think he's probably gonna ban either my Python or Kaimor. Yeah. I mean both of his snookers, like Ronda and Basileus, they can one-shot Rotos. I mean he picked him to counter Rotos. And they could one-shot him to Necret, which is clearly what he was doing here, so... Um, yeah, and if I pick something like Helicat, he would have banned it as well, so... As long as I made um, a good last pick, either Kaimar or Helicat, basically, he was gonna ban them, so... It didn't really matter which one I went with. And if I picked Necret, it would have been a massive mistake against Basileus and Ronda. Both of them ignore shields and do multi-hit. But um, since he doesn't have lockout, and I have a revive in my team, Basileus is kind of ways to pick against me. If I weren't able to revive, and he just one-shots my Rotos and the fight is over, that would be good, but um, Wukong is gonna get back up no matter what. And outside of that, Basileus is not very threatening to me, so... And Wukong might die a few times, but he's gonna have, um, with these two nukers, he's definitely gonna have Isu killing my Python. Wait, should I go for the A2? How much? He has two polymorphs. Sifi is with six star. Should we risk it? Probably Sifi has enough resistance anyway. No, actually, let's not do A2 yet. He has immunity on both of his nukers, so. But I'll do it later. I'm still gonna gamble with A2 and risk getting polymorphed. But um, as long as he doesn't kill Python early on, which I I hope he's not able to, maybe unless he doesn't get like any weak hits on me, but it shouldn't be very easy for him to kill the Python. And Wukong is gonna get up by itself, 
like he can't do anything about it and uh, yeah he's gonna get more speed and damage from Keyless so even if the first A2 didn't uh, one shot his entire team but maybe next time if the target that I hit with the A2 maybe if it isn't full HP or maybe he's gotten more damage from the m like the mas mastery stacking damage and speed he, eventually I will just one shot his entire team with um, with Wukong and we're able to revive Rotos as well so Wait, did he kill Ron Wukong with the Ronda A2? I wasn't even paying attention to it. I think he killed Wukong with the Ronda A2, so the passive was disabled. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, he can definitely do that, but then he's not using it on uh, on Python. It's kind of looking rough, but I think if I can just get one more A2, I think I can still make a comeback here. Or if he gets some weak hits with Ronda, my uh, Python might not die so easily. Oh nice, maybe we can steal the attack bar from Ronda. Ah, uh, damn it. Oh, nice. <laughs> so Reaper killed both of them. Okay, that's good enough. Even if we didn't steal the attack bar, it bought us some time. And now they don't have immunity, so maybe we can fear them. Oh nice, okay. Both of them got decreased attack and immunity. I think that's it for this fight. Oh, that was close. <laughs> uh, my allergies are killing me. I think he just killed... Um, I mean, just used the... No, he didn't, though. I thought he didn't have got to survive anymore, but I guess he got it back. I wish there was a vaccination for allergies, but there isn't, so I can't really get rid of them. Oh, okay, now it's looking kind of bad. The, the issue now is that uh, since I don't have revive, if he kills Wukong with A2 on Ronda, then it's over. But I think if we get one more A2, we will also end it, so... Oh, damn it. I think he's probably gonna get A2 now. Oh, okay, we... Oh, wait, wait. Can we end the fight? I think we might be able... To... If we broke Hellish Master, we're definitely gonna end the fight now. Come on. Yeah. Damn, that 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 was a rough fight. Kind of rougher than I was... I was hoping that uh, my Python would tank the Ronda easier, but... Um, he didn't do so well, and I guess he had the plus for Basileo, so... It was doing good damage seven outside of the A2, but but we still won it, so nice. Oh, he was also very high points, almost five thousand, so that that was definitely above average um, enemy team that we could meet. It's kind of, um, I mean, he doesn't have Taras or Mariska in his team, and not even Harima, so it looks a bit unusual, but. Ronda and Roanas are big counters to Rotos. And back in the day when arena defense meta wasn't uh, wasn't ruined by the Ukraine duo, you would see all kinds of different things in defense. And Rotos, of course, one was one of the best defense meta nukers. And people would use U Ronda and Basilos specifically to counter Rotos because. Um, even if you're using Rotos and Necret in your defense team, both of them can one-shot Rotos even through Necret uh, protection. So they were meta, or like they were super meta bri briefly at one point, just after Blessings. <laughs> yeah, like between Blessings and uh, Taras and Maritska, but 
now you don't really see them in classic arena anymore but actually i have noticed that in uh, gold 3 ronda is definitely way more popular than it is in gold 2 and it's always used in speed teams and if you're using him in speed teams then she can one shot enemies with a2 and it's not just that he can one shot enemies or she but she can disable passes like uh Protoss and Wukong. Why isn't my um, Discord uh, blocking all of the stuff when I'm doing a video? Wait. Yeah, Discord usually has this thing called streamer mode and you're not supposed to get any notifications or attacks when you do a video, but I would put it on now. Usually it goes on automatically. I don't know why it didn't do it this time. I'm surprised that there wasn't any other being something now, but not a big deal. Oh, we're getting a very hard opponent again. It's like 5,000 points. By the way, that's that uh, tag is a good uh, opportunity to shield for my Discord again. For the longest time I was saying that I'm not going to make a Discord, but I ended up making it a couple of months ago anyway. Probably it hasn't even been two months, maybe like one and a half months ago, because there was like some people were asking for it a lot. And in our, I mean, we talk about game and everything else, but in our Discord, we have lots of um, other chat than just uh, talking about arena reset and live arena and so on but we have also people talking about uh, like real life events and politics so if you are into that then that is our most uh, most active uh, channel in the discord anyway i'm not really a professional like like uh shiller or promotional type of guy so i'm not really it's not really my thing, but if you're interested about the Discord and didn't know about it, know about it, then I do have a Discord now, and it's surprisingly active Discord for a, a small channel like like mine. But I guess it kind of makes sense because there isn't too many PvP focused channels in Raid, so it mostly has those people that are into PvP. There really isn't too many places for them to go. The go-to place used to be Moneyball Discord, but he quit making videos, I don't know, maybe like three years ago. It's been forever since Moneyball quit, so there isn't really anything like that nowadays. Okay, so he got the UDK. I'm gonna get harassed by Sifi in this fight. I think if he's gonna do that, then we have to go with... Um, with Helicat. Probably Kaimar is gonna be my last pick. I'm gonna, if I'm gonna assume he's gonna pick like Harim and then maybe Mariska or some other support. If he doesn't pick Harima, then we wouldn't necessarily have to pick Kaimar, but Kaimar might still be a good pick even if he doesn't go with Lockout or Harim. I mean, the worst possible thing is, is if he picks both Lockout and Harima now, then I would be screwed. I hope he doesn't do that. Usually I try to first pick UDK and he, he clearly knew that I do it, specifically so that they can't get UDK, Harima and Lockout in the same team, because that completely screws with my Rotos and Wukong. Oh, Kaimar and Regas, that's kind of interesting. That's too bad because I was actually... Wait, wait. Should I go with Moritu here? I was actually planning to pick Regas, but he picked it, and now it's gonna screw with my Helicat, and I can't pick it either, so... Wait, wait, wait. You know what I should do? 
Let's go with Thormin. Let's go with Triple Nuker. I don't know if he's going to ban my Duchess or not, but... I'm going to go with Thormin and ban the Sifi instead of uh, UDK. This might backfire against me hard, though. If he... Well, actually, I don't think he's going to ban Thormin. Yeah, he doesn't want to ban the Thormin, so... I think he's going to ban Duchess or Helicat. Let's see. I mean, Rodos and Wukong are going to be pretty useless here now. But maybe he still expects me to ban UDK. We will see. Okay, so we got the Tormin in the fight, but we don't have defense buff for Tormin, Tormin so he's not going to do insane damage. But also he doesn't... Ah, my voice is dying. He doesn't have any reviver or really proper heals in his team, so... It's not going to be that big issue, but we're not going to one-shot anybody with Tormin, but... The thing with Taras, which is not that easily abusable, but sometimes it is, but... He does give turn meter boost on his A1, which is insanely OP, of course. But that also means that he can uh, proc Tormin passive with, with A1, which is can be devastating to his team. By the way, that um, that Taras has to have very high attack because um, it only did half damage of day two on my Duchess and not the usual full damage. Like he only did 60k. The really good um, Taras is do around uh, like 180k if um, if your attack is not lower than theirs, but Basically, I don't know if I should have gone with A3 there. I don't think I would have killed anybody with A3. Damn it. But yeah, he did 60k and let's say that he's not very good gear on the Taras. Then 120k is definitely the normal damage. So my Duchess had lower attack than his Taras, which is very unusual because my Duchess isn't really... Built specifically for that, and Taras has very, um, very low base um, attack, so it's pretty much impossible to be to be lower attack than Taras unless like Taras isn't built well, and your whatever champ whatever champion is built with zero attack specifically to counter Taras. But I think we're still gonna lose this fight, sadly. The UDK is just. Uh, too big issue for me. Maybe if we get a crit here with A... Oh, we don't have A3. If we get extra turn and we crit with A3, maybe we have a chance to win. Okay. I think that's over. Maybe I should have still banned the um, UDK and pick something else than uh, Tormin, but I had to... <laughs> I had to give it a go. It was basically kind of unbeatable team for me anyway, so... I kind of tried something different to throw him off. I mean, a count like that is definitely way out of my league, to be fair, so... By the way, as always, if um, if there's any topics that you want me to make videos about, I'm always open to um, suggestions. I definitely do have this issue that I have been kind of lazy and not making um, a lot of videos lately. Not even live arena videos, never mind other videos, but, but I will make them eventually, you will see. I think I actually... I have some uh, videos that I'm gonna make this week and next week that uh, I'm just gonna put it out that probably some people uh, will not be happy about, but uh, hopefully you will understand why I make those videos, so don't get too mad about it. I need to, I need to make some money as well, so likely you will see something unusual content from me in the next couple of days. And if that deal goes through, which basically it has, but 
when I post them, then just know that uh, it is um, it is very beneficial for me to do so. So there's no no way I could pass out on the opportunity to do it, even though it might not be the content that most people want to see. But in ex exchange for that, I promise that I will. Um, in the next like week uh, or a couple of weeks, I'm definitely gonna do more of my normal videos as well. I'm just, I'm not gonna do just those videos and not any normal videos. I'm also gonna do normal videos, so there's probably gonna be more videos than average in the next couple of weeks. Let's put it that way. But I'm not gonna spell it out specifically what I'm talking about. But I'm sure you can probably figure it out and. If not, then you should find about it in a couple days. But just just saying so, don't don't hate me for doing other videos as well. Okay, what do I want to be here? The enemy got the UDK first. Wait, is this the guy that we fought before? I think it is. So yeah. It, Wait, wait, he went with the Basileus and Ronda, and now he picked UDK. Should we go with Tormin in this fight? He's expecting us to pick Wukong again. Maybe we could surprise him with... Um... Or then go with... Ah, damn, I'm running out of time. I guess I just need to make up my mind. Fuck. Okay. Oh, we got cut. Okay. I was gonna pick Necrot, but actually Kaimar is better than Necrot in this one, so that that's fine. We don't have defense buff. I don't. Ugh. Damn it! He picked Arbiter. Actually, Tormin would have been so good here. God damn it! But to be honest, we're gonna go with Tormin even if we don't have defense buff. I wish so much I had a Sifi. Like Sifi would be. It would give me so much options because Sifi can be both a normal reviver. But then I can also pick Tormin, and now I kind of have to pick a Reviver, Tormin, and a Defense Buff Champion to actually use Tormin. But this team is so squeezy that we actually um, we can totally use Tormin even without Defense Buff. I think I'm gonna go risk it and ban the UDK, but to be fair, his account is crazy good, so it's very likely that uh, we're not able to resist that. Uh, Lock out, but let's give it a go. And yeah, I was expecting him to ban the Tormin because I mean that he has to ban the Tormin in in this matchup. But if we if we resist the lockout, then we might win. Oh, oh we did it! Oh, yeah, I, I kind of wasn't expecting to be honest, but we did it, and we have double reviver and Duchess as the whale. Which Python didn't have last time. So, um, we should definitely get some turns on Rotos. And if I can just get a single, I hope I hope Kaimar is gonna go before Duchess. It's faster, but if the, okay, now it should. If Duchess got uh, procs from the Masteries, it might be possible that it went first. But yeah, since we did the Duchess revive, Rotos is failed and he's not able to target it with. Ronda or Basileus A2 or Ronda A. Ah, oh, we got stunned. Ah, oh, goddammit. We got stunned and we lost the whale, so never mind. We're still in trouble. Th that is kind of double edged sword because the Basileus can, of course, get Polymorph, but I think we're in trouble now. I don't know if we can. <laughs> if we can get the turn on Rotos. If we can just get one turn, we would be good, but we might not be able to get a single turn in this fight. Damn, damn, damn. If I resisted that Basileus stun, I definitely would have won this fight. But at this point, I don't know if I can make a comeback anymore. Yeah, now he's just... He's gonna lock me out, and by the time that I get my cooldowns back, if I can even survive that long, then uh, he's also gonna have his cooldown, so... I, 
I actually used to use Basileos in my classic arena offense back in the day as well. It was just before I started using Gala. I, I was using Basileos every week. But yeah, th that's basically the one good thing that he does is that he counters Rotos, but outside of that he's um, not super relevant and especially is completely useless against something like Taras or uh, Harima, which are the two most common nukers that you see in live arena, so. But to be fair, like, even though we got multiple losses in row now, or I don't know in row, but we got multiple losses, but <laughs> those enemies that we're losing against, they are like, like, billion times above my pay grade and they are even like specifically like they know that i'm always picking rotos and udk and as you saw they were first picking udk because they know my champions and that i don't have anything else that i have to use so they are like really hard accounts like good accounts and they specifically are countering my account and like it is what it is i can't really be too mad that I can't beat them because it's really like uh, it's not it's not something I can really do so it's out of my out of my league so I can't get too mad that I can't beat them even though the team that he might is using might seem kind of unusual but the Ronda and Basileus completely counter Rotos so it's kind of better than him actually using Taras against me when he does it that way in a speed team and he bans my other nuker every time. What are we gonna do here? Fuck. I guess we're gonna... Wait, actually, he's just gonna pick Kaimar, yeah? Let's it, let it automatic, automatically pick Kaimar and then we can decide what we go with. I don't want to show Wukong because... Um, I don't want to, like, um, entice him to be Karma. I'd rather he didn't be Karma. Okay, he didn't be Karma, but again, it's Ronda, which A2 is gonna block the passes of Rotos and Wukong, so it's an issue for me. Also, I have seen a lot of people using Ramandu in Gold 3, which is kind of surprising that we haven't met it today, but usually I see, to be honest, most enemies that I meet in Gold 3 are using some kind of buff stripper, which is not very common in lower tiers, but Ramon specifically seems to be way more popular in Gold, T Gold 3 than in other tiers. Yeah, th this is gonna be a very hard matchup for us, to be honest. I'm almost considering banning the Ronda. It's kind of tempting to do it. But I think we're still gonna go for the Taras ban. Yeah, probably. Yeah, oh, he banned Rotos. I was not really expecting him to ban Rotos, but. Like, I was expecting him to ban. Um, well, to be honest, he should have banned one of the Nukers. I guess it makes sense that he banned Rotos, but. Basically, if we can get turns, then we can make a comeback, but. He can disable the Wukong passive with the Ronda A2 and he has us locked out, so it's gonna be hard to revive Wukong. Oh, and we did get locked out this time. I, I wonder why he... He should have used A2 on Wukong and not Duchess. But I don't know if that really helps us anyway, so... I mean... I guess we have more chance to win this way, but probably we still can't win. By the time that we get our cooldowns back, or even before that, he's already gonna do the lockout again since he does have a, uh, double speed boosters and he's very fast. I should have picked Tormin and banned the Sifi against him, but they can also disable the Tormin passive, so.
yeah, I think it's a lost fight. I don't think anything I do matters here unless I get very lucky and either my Duchess or Wukong resist the lockout, but even if I do, I'm not sure if I'm gonna win. Yeah, I don't know what I should have picked, but I think I should have maybe picked something else against this guy. Maybe if he happens to kill the Wukong and then he uses Lockout when he's dead, maybe that would have been a way to win, but okay, I guess we can just surrender at this point. Yeah, I'm kind of getting destroyed by the speed teams, but this is not something new. Speed teams have always, always been issue to me in live arena. Yeah, both of these guys were using um, Ronda with uh, a speed team. But it's still... I can't be too mad about this because uh, it is called 3, so we're getting very hard enemies. And I did win against some of them, so... Oh yeah, I, I haven't one against this guy once, but but not the second time. Yeah, g give us some some lower points enemies, not just the super hard accounts. G give me something a bit more palatable. By the way, speaking of the next fusion, I mean, I never really want to recommend people to skip fusions, but for me, I have been, I have been going very hard at the Wukong, Wukong event, and the fusion doesn't seem very interesting. So, I'm kind of low on resources. I really don't want to miss this four-star Wukong. There's a good chance that I will skip this. Um... Wait, which, which faction he even is? I haven't even thought about it that much. There, there's a good chance that I will skip this um... event, but we will see about it. Wait, what faction can he even be? I thought that surely he is uh, Night Revenant. Banner Lords. I guess it kind of makes sense, but wait, he's already in I, I thought he was already in the game. Okay, no, never mind. I think uh considering that he's some kind of evil character, I guess it would have made thematically more sense if he was um Knight Revenant, but whatever, but regardless, um, I think it's some kind of irrelevant PvE champion and not super relevant event there, so definitely something that um, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't feel too bad about skipping him, so I might do it, but of course, um, you might get a dupe of him and dupes might be good for either faction guardians or token trader so there is that aspect to consider so if the fusion isn't too hard and i can actually do it then i will still go for it but i did the champion training event and i did other events so i don't know if i actually have the resources to do it anymore and speaking about token trader they have promised, I mean, it's been forever since they did do it, but they have promised that they're gonna 
do something about the champion pool in the token trader, so they're gonna change it or add new champions to it or something. So eventually there is gonna be something new that you can buy with those points as well. And I mean, you never know, maybe they they put a Rotos there or something. I wouldn't really rule something like that out of the realm of possibilities. People always um, assume the worst about Plarium, and of course they're always trying to make money, but to be fair, I think oftentimes they don't um, they don't uh, even realize the implications to like like the PvP meta and so on, and they don't even understand if something is like super OP or if it's just average. Like sometimes they don't even realize it, so. I wouldn't be that surprised if they put something like Rodos there and consider him kind of a relic of the past and not relevant anymore. So, who knows? I mean, they're, they're definitely not gonna put something like Ukraine do there, but they might put something like Rodos there that, um, that is better than they think. Anyway, that's me being maybe ultra optimistic. Unlikely that they're gonna do it, but you never know what happens. Also, I'm really looking forward to getting six star gases. I'm at like 200 something um, tier two tokens and you need 300 from five to six. And normally that takes an insane amount of time to get 100 tokens without buying any of the soul, stone, soul stones. But in the last couple of weeks or a week, we got tons of tier 2 tokens from those uh, Wukong, um, whatever it's called, the Wukong Blessing event, uh, event events, from the events related to getting points for 4 star Wukong. Most of them had like 250 essence for tier 2 tokens which means like 5 tokens and I think that there was maybe like 5 or more of those types of events so I have been getting a lot of them lately Should we go with Tormin here? Ah, oh, fuck Where is Wukong? Okay Damn, I was looking for Wukong and then hoping it like it, it automatically picks the highest uh, player power champion. So I was trying to find Wukong and then it would pick Kaimar to me automatically. But okay, Mountain King and Kaimar work as well. What do I then want to ban here? I'm I'm thinking Rabantu because Rabantu screws up with Rotos and all of my champions so hard. The thing is that. Since I'm only relying on go second teams, of course the passives are a huge part of this. Like every nuker that I use, or like my main nukers, um, Rotos, Wukong, and Tormin, all of them have a passive that increases their survivability. And if that gets removed, then they are just as squeezy as anything else. And even like Dutch or UDK rely on their passives, so. That, that's a big part of the reason why I need to get the 6-star blessing on Dutchess as soon as possible. Th that was kind of long brand where I was I was coming to this issue, but yeah, the 6-star the blessing is a big deal. It might not seem as big deal as it is, but once I do get it, I think it's gonna make a huge difference for my live arena fights. Okay, Rotos got one tapped. And he banned the Kaimor, so so we're not getting our cooldowns back easily. This might be Isu, but he doesn't have a turn meter boost, so maybe we can still get uh, even the revive back on Dutchess. Who knows? Probably not, but it's kind of close. I might be able to do it. Our team is still very tanky for him, so if we can just get 
couple turns with our cooldowns, then we can make a big comeback. Ah, I wish that would have one shot the Cardinal. Mountain King gets 50% attack increase for each skill, and of course he also gets 6% six per six damage and and 6 speed, I think, from the masteries for each skill. So it will increase his damage by a lot. Okay, look, looks like our Duchess is not fast enough to do it, but... Wait, wait. If we can kill him now, then we're gonna make progress. Okay, good. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't have been able to kill the Warlord, since it seems kind of tanky. But we got rid of the Cardale, and maybe next time we can uh, kill the Warlord. We, we will see. Isleorios is definitely kind of having issues to kill my Duchess because, as you know, Leorios is an old-fashioned Nougar that doesn't have ignore defense, and my Duchess is like 150k HP, and he doesn't have attack buff, so of course it's not going to be easy for him. Even though for some of those other champions, it it might seem like it, they don't have any issues at all killing my Duchess. So, something like Taras can easily one-shot my Duchess both with A2 and A3 if it's well geared. And of course Baron and Leo Reus. Basically every champion that has ignore defense or the good ones, they can all one-shot my Duchess, even though she's insanely tanky. But then champions that don't are gonna have like insane uh, issues having enough damage to actually finish her off. I could... It's kind of funny because a year ago I didn't have a single Duchess. I got my first Duchess a year ago. But I have three at this point, or I have pulled three. And then I have this at plus one and then I have... Oh, we got the... Oh yeah, never mind, the wall is dead. I have another uh, plus zero, so I could basically make this plus two. I'm kind of considering doing it on both my Necret and Duchess, but... Even though I'm not using the second ones on them a lot, th though I'm actually using the, the second Duchess right now for the Initva team. But they are the type of champions that you can definitely have used for at least two, but even more than two, so... Probably 10% um, defense and HP and is it 15 speed? 10 speed? It's probably not worth the sacrifice, but I'm still thinking about doing it at some point. Okay, so at the start it kind of seemed like we were gonna lose it, but our team was too tanky for him in the end. We definitely could have lost this fight, so we didn't like completely stomp him, stomp him or anything like that. To be honest, I think if he had Wukong instead of Leorios, I think he would have destroyed us. But um, but yeah, the, the Leorios was having issues. As as you have seen in the other fights that I did. Hugo can do more than 200k damage with A2, even without attack buff. It's definitely way more damage than um, Leorios can do. O of course, I mean, Leorios doesn't get one shot, so there's different uses for Leorios, but it's usually in a speed team against um, other squishy teams or something like that. I was picking Rotos first against the other people, and he's definitely familiar with my champions, because he does Platinum Marina. And they were picking UDK, so let's go with UDK first this time. I mean, he has Saras and Marit Sky and Lockout and everything, so we basically basically know what he can do. Probably his uh, last picks are gonna be 
paras and merit sky lockout. I assume so. We're definitely gonna de need Kai more in this fight than. I can't recall how much empowered his lockouts are. It's pretty likely that, considering that he has passed for a city, he probably has multiple lockouts. And if he does, then he might pick the high accuracy lockout against me. So I don't know if my Kaimar can resist him, but I think we have to go with that route. Wait, wait. I wish I was the last pick here. This is very tempting to go with Tormin and uh, uh, Mitrala or something. But the thing is that if I do pick it, then he's just gonna pick Python or Elva or anything else with Immunity and Glance. So we're not gonna be able to do it. If he, if that was his entire team and I could pick Tormin now and ban the city, I would be able to win it. But I can't go with Tormin on this one. Only if I was the last pick. I guess we're gonna have to go with Kaimar and Wukong. Wait, where is Kaimar? It's kind of fortunate for me that uh, my Mountain King and Kaimar are my highest um, power champions because it has happened to me so many times that I'm too slow to pick and those champions are kind of uh, usable. Or, I mean, I do use them, so I kind of get saved by the bell many times. Okay, so it is a plus zero, but it's a Yumeko, so he can use the aura. And it has six star blessings, so there's a good chance that my Kaimar is not going to be able to resist this Yumeko. And he probably has multiple Yumekos, so if that is a high accuracy Yumeko, then we have no chance. Even if we can resist Yumeko, I don't think we have a good chance at beating him, but let's see. Yeah, so we didn't resist him, yeah. I kind of was expecting that. Okay, unless unless a Rotos really pops off here and starts getting a good amount of extra turns, I don't think we have any chance beating him. Come on, let's give us some like insane RNG and a surprise upset. Hopefully in the next fight, assuming that I get him, I'm gonna get the last pick. And if I do, then I have better chance to win against him than I did this time. If, if we get lucky and Wukong versus the Yumeko or something, well, uh, uh, even still we won't win. Not with the Maritska and Biffy combination, I don't think. The issue is that even if you kill Maritska first with the Wukong A2, like you kill, you hit him and then it hits everybody else and Maritska dies first, Sifi is still gonna get revived and that's a that's a BS mechanic. It shouldn't work that way, but but it does. So it is what it is. I really, I really love to see some. I mean, it's never gonna happen, but. It kind of has happened in the past because when Tormin and Rotos were released to the game, they were the best champions for a, a good period of time, both of them, and they were dominating the meta. I'd love to see a new fusion champion that is better than Taras and Maritska, or, or is good and 
counters them really hard or something. I really want to see that happen and then all of these um, like Mega Whale accounts, they would kind of get to taste their own medicine for a while and they would get destroyed by people like me and I'm sure they would hate it just like I, get, I hate getting destroyed by them right now. So simply because uh, Taras and Marit's car are so broken. So. I, I think the meta is so screwed that I, I'd love to see more unbalanced OB champions. Th th that's the only way that the meta can ever change. And I kind of don't think the meta is ever gonna change. I don't think we will ever get champion that is uh, better than Ukraine do or is able to counter them. So I think for the end of the raid, it's gonna be the same meta. Maybe the last two champions in your team might change slightly. Probably not Sifi, but maybe if they release something with insane synergy. Maybe the last champion could be something other than UDK, but I don't think... I think Taras is always going to be the best uh, nuker in the game, and Maritska is always going to be the best support in the game. I'm like... I really don't think it will ever change. Uh, should we go with Necrot? Now nah, let's just go with Tormin, even though we don't have... Uh... Yeah, let's just go with Tormin. He's gonna ban the Tormin, that's for sure, but th that's fine. Uh, I think we're gonna ban the Lockout. Yeah, we're gonna ban the Lockout. I was almost... Wait, wait should I ban the George? Th that would be kind of interesting if I... I mean, the issue is that my Rotos can't survive the bombs, but actually, let's ban the charges. I mean, Wukong can. Oh, he banned the Duchess. I was kind of expecting him to ban either Tormin or Wukong, but Duchess makes sense too. But we're definitely gonna have somebody or multiple people that survive the bombs now. I mean, both Tormin and Wukong are gonna outlive them. UDK is gonna die because of the uh, stone skin, but and Protoss is gonna die too. But Tormin is gonna get frozen and survive with the passive, and Wukong should get revived after that. So maybe we have a small chance. I mean, we're gonna be locked out, but let's see. But yeah, I guess the Duchess ban makes sense because if, if I had Duchess here, then Duchess would probably survive the bombs if I land the charge it. And I guess Wukong is locked out, so it's not easy to to make a comeback with him. But maybe if I can freeze his team a couple times, then it might be possible. I mean, I do have Revenge accessories on Tormin, so he might get some... Oh, I think he just got frozen there, but the animation was so fast that we just saw him getting bossed. But I think he gave the guy his extra turn and then it got frozen, but... Oh, we did more damage than I was expecting. I mean, it's full speed Arbiter, so I guess it's gonna be very squishy. But if he happens to hit Tormin and proc counter attack that might also um, change the oh we really needed that um well i'm not sure but i think yeah the town was good though but if i get one a1 with tormin maybe i could still make a comeback maybe that town bought us a few turns of time i'm not 100 percent sure <laughs> i think uh the the guy just got frozen again He's getting so frustrated that... Oh, oh, nice, we got the A3 back. I think that's it. I think we can win. <laughs> oh, the Duchess is was in Swift Barry. He probably has the Revile. I assume that he was not using it, but I wasn't... Yeah, I wasn't paying attention to it. <laughs> and he got frozen again. L long live Tormin passive. 
Oh, Farming got polymorphed, goddammit. That might be it. Ah, uh, Wukong died. Actually, now he can't lock out Wukong. <laughs> Since he's dead. Maybe if the turns go the way that uh, Wukong gets turned just after Yumeko, and he's not able to cut in, <laughs> then I'm gonna win. <laughs> I think that's it. I think, yes. Okay, that's definitely the win. Let's see how much damage I do with A2. Yeah. Nice. You love you love to see it. I mean, the, the this is the only ways that I can uh, deal with these speed teams. So to be fair, I think um, like I mentioned, usually these speed teams they kind of know how my team works that I'm relying on the passive, and usually they are using either Ramal or Ronda. So if he used one of them, then he probably would have done better but i'll take it it's fun to beat against this team and of course a team like this is insanely strong the Chu chen is kind of a good addition to those types of teams and you see her often used with uh george and in, in speed teams basically what she does is that uh, she gives buffs to the nuker and then she also gives them an extra turn. 50% attack, crit rate and crit damage on two turns. And then gives them an extra turn. And then also has turn meter manipulation. And basically doesn't need any built-in accuracy. You can just go full speed with the passive. I mean, if you have her at like 400 speed, which these good accounts are gonna have them either that or even more than that, you basically don't need any accuracy. It's good enough to um, debuff anything that isn't built in by resistance. And if they are, then you're gonna need like 800 or 900 accuracy. So it's not worth um, going that high anyway so basically you don't need to build any accuracy at all on that champion i mean even if you go full speed on him i'm sure you're gonna have a little bit of accuracy on your substat so probably you can easily get like i don't know like 400 plus speed and 5 to 600 accuracy on her so it's a good combination like the passive makes sense on her It's definitely not my most wanted champion, but it is one of the better champions that we have in this game. It's kind of niche because basically you want to use her with um, ignore defense champions like George or Baron. George is definitely the best one though. I hope I won't get her, but if I did get her, then she would be the second best champion that I have bought, or I guess uh, kind of equal to Necrot, but but she wouldn't really fit in my account, so I hope to get something else. Also, I haven't uh, taken a look at Reddit for a while, so let's see what's going on. <laughs> okay. I'm like, I'm definitely gonna disagree with this, but I kind of I can already guess from the headline. Halloween events are terrible for everyone. So what he means by that is that the events are very hard to do because they're faction specific. And of course I'm saying this before I read what they said. But they are faction specific and they are very hard to do. But it's kind of a, a reward for old like longtime players of the game that it's something that we can do fairly easy like if you if you have the champions to do them then it doesn't really require a lot of games or extra effort to do them and they are kind of easier than events generally though maybe a bit more time consuming but for me they're actually very nice events <sighs> should i gamble and uh, go with Tormin in this one 
I think we're gonna gamble, yeah. Wait, where is Helicat? Went too slow. He has the Wukong and Helicat isn't a great matchup against him, but I'm gonna use it for Tormin defense buff, so let's see what happens. I could have gone with Mitrola as well, but then he would have probably knew what I was gonna do, so I wanna pick Tormin and ban the Duchess, Duchess, and I'm hoping that he doesn't pick a second champion with immunity or plans, but we'll see. That Wukong looks to be Nuker based on the blessing, Soul Reaper. So if it is a Nuker, then he can still pick something like Python and one more Nuker or Elva or whatever. I guess I picked Python. Oh, so he did pick. This is good for Tormin, but I think he's probably gonna ban Tormin to be honest. Or or Helicat. He's gonna ban one of them, I think. But this is a good matchup for me. Or not the good, but it's a um, it's it's hard matchup, but it might be winnable. I mean, I'm gonna get locked out, so it's not an easy matchup, but. Maybe, maybe I can do it. Oh, he banned Rotos. I was expecting him to ban Tormin, but uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't have a speed aura, sadly. But maybe my Heligat is still faster than his Yumeko. Probably not, since I don't have a speed aura. But possibly my Heligat could be faster, and then I would get the block damage before I get locked out. Then, oh, okay. So it is faster. I kind of knew that this was possibility, but. He does have speed aura, but we get the block damage now, and then we're probably gonna almost get our cooldowns back by the time that it ends. So it's not that big deal. And his team is gonna get destroyed by uh, uh, Tormin passive. Just wait, wait and see, or unless he gets insanely lucky. And this is what I was. I have explained this in my fa past video, like the Tormin one. But um, when when Wukong does the buff strip and block debuffs on Helicat, as you can see, it's kind of has this weird interaction, which has to do in the order that those effects happen. But we do we do lose the block damage, and we get the block debuffs, but we still get the defense buff before we get the block damage. So even though Helicat is not good for Helicat, I mean even though Wukong is not a good matchup for Helicat. But it's not completely terrible. We, we still get the defense buff. And there's a good chance that um, Wukong can get the uh, polymorphed as well. Okay, kind of unfortunate that he's not getting um, frozen. But he has tons of turn meter boosts in his team. Even though it, it might seem like he doesn't have that much buffs that only Maritzka and Wukong do buffs. But he has tons of turn meter boost, and those can also freeze his team, so this can be very annoying for him, but of course it kind of comes down to RNC, how how often and on which champions we rock the freezes. Th this might be a long fight, but it can be winnable one for us. This is basically what um, Tormin is most used in Live Arena 4. Of course you can counter speed teams with Arbiter and stuff, but it is also good against Taras and Maritzka combination, as long as they don't have something like um, Python, Sifi, Cardiel, Elva in the team. But if they don't, then Tormin is actually pretty good. We're still gonna struggle with the issue of damage that can we actually finish his team off. But since we specifically banned the reviver for the Tormin passive, that he doesn't have the immunity, 
He also doesn't have two revivers in his team now, so the Marit's capacity isn't as um, overpowered overpowered at this like time. They, they should make it so that Marit's capacity doesn't work if you have um, another champion in the team with revive or some kind of mechanic like that. Maybe maybe if um, Marit's revives the team with passive then everybody in the team gets a debuff or something or and they can't use revives for five turns or whatever if they did something like that then it could kind of uh, balance maritzko that that would be kind of um unorthodox way to balance her but i think that is the main issue with her like of course all of her skills are like overtuned and maybe maybe like too good but the main issue is the like the synergy with the passive having no cooldown and reviving champions with almost full turn meter and then you pair it with Sifi and then she gets revived at full turn meter and it's an endless um, unbeatable cycle but of course um, her A, her A2 is still insanely good with like it makes the team insanely tanky but the A1 is the big issue as well because uh, your Taras always ally attacks with that and it's not just one Taras but every Taras in your team so if if the passive had cooldown and the A2 uh, the A1 only applied to one Taras well the A2 as well like multiple Taras shouldn't proc the A2 when Mariska gets hit but if those three things were fixed, then I would be okay with Maritzka, even though she will still be very good. Or the best. She will still be the best, but... Anyway, we did lose this one. It was kind of close. With better RNG, we definitely could have killed it. The Taras almost died earlier, like, already, but... Uh, I think we kind of got, got unlucky with those um, freezes. We definitely could have gotten way more freezes against him. Kind of unfortunate because it would have been uh, fun to end the video with the victory. Wait, why do we not see all the fights? I think we had we had multiple um, wins before this fight, but they are not shown even though I didn't restart the game. Anyway, I guess that's it for today's video and it's been a while since I made a live arena session and or like full session and a video, but I finally did it, so yay. And I'll make video about the Initve strategy on weekend for everybody that's interested, but it's pretty self-explanatory, or I, I guess you get the gist of it watching the video and I did explain the specifics of it in comments and in my uh, Discord, but I will definitely make another video about it, so stay tuned for that and see ya.